When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Welcome to our August 28th Bible study. Now, as I sit here and giggle for a moment, I will go ahead and share with all of you why. I have literally sat here and talked to myself for about 15 minutes and realized that I was not recording. So I I, I hit some stellar points. I, I, I may have well shown my pastoral genius and the only things that will ever remember that is me and my non-recording camera. So uh, maybe I can hit some of those points again. Uh, but here we are in our uh, Bible study for uh, August 28th. And uh, let's, let's just jump into it. I, I, maybe I can hit some of these points again. Uh, but here we go. Uh, this is our uh, uh, exploration in Christ's conversation with his followers, asking a very simple question, but it's a very layered question. Who do you say that I am? Now, within the structure of this conversation, as Christ is talking to the followers, Christ lays it out in two different ways. And this is how that my sermon was broken down on Sunday. The first question, which is truly radically different than the second. The first question that Jesus Christ asked is, who do they say that I am? Who do people say the Son of Man is? Who do the people say that I am? Then he follows it up after an explanation, after a sharing. Then he follows it up with the second question. And the second question is, who do you say that I am? Now this Sunday, I, I broke this down in, in, in two different ways. I broke it down with an explanation of the importance of the followers, the disciples, knowing who that they their responsibility when Jesus Christ asked the question who do people say the son of man is who do they say that I am there's a little bit of a challenge within that there's this push there is this desire that Christ is seeking that the disciples the followers know the community that they're serving. For them to be able to answer, who do people say the Son of Man is? That's uh, that and everybody knows. I I am not an English major. That is, but that that question is still hard for me to to produce. Who do people say the Son of Man is? Who do they say that I am? There's a challenge within this of. How much do you know about the people that I will be calling you to serve? How much time do you spend with them? What are the conversations that you're having? As we talked last week about Jesus Christ uh, building a bridge between the Israelite and the Canaanite structures by blessing the Canaanite woman with her question, who do they say that I am? Who do people say the Son of Man is? Is a, is a, is a bridge-building question. How are you taking the time? How are you reaching out? How are you spending time with this collection of people to find out their needs or desires? And it's not so much who do people say the Son of Man is. Who do the people need the Son of Man to be? 
That's a very, a very wonderful question, and it's something that I am constantly in prayer over. I've been on a frustrating journey on so many different levels uh, going through this journey with COVID-19. There is things that I'm asked to do by leadership, not not so much the leadership of North Coast United Methodist Church, but the, the higher leadership of our denominational structure. And there's been times in, in my conversations, and I'm walking a tightrope, and I hope that there's a safety net under me with the next thing I say. There, there's been times that I've been given explanations. I've been suggested things to share that, for me, has shown a disconnect of an understanding of the needs of the greater community. You know, sometimes when we address issues, sometimes when we go into uh, problem-solving mode, sometimes when we step into uh, uh, times that we need to be the caregivers of the greater world, we go into those situations with our own personal understanding of the situation. We, we solve it, we try to solve the situation with the abilities that we have. And I want to try to explain this as, as cautiously as possible. Um, sometimes the solutions that we bring to issues, that we bring to problems, are built upon the tools that we have as an individual. And it may not be the tools that the individuals that we're trying to help has. Sometimes we, we go into life problem-solving areas following the golden rule, do unto others as you would have be done unto you. But then I've, I've shared in different services, different conversations, the platinum rule. And that's I hear the platinum rule when Jesus Christ asks this question, who do people say the Son of Man is? The platinum rule is do unto others as they would want to have done unto them. Instead of pushing on our personal understanding, pushing out and trying to transform people to use tools that we have, but they may not, uh, trying to be caregivers for situations in the best possible way that will be of the most benefit to the individual. As I look at this, I, I hear the platinum rule. When Jesus Christ utters the phrase, who do people say the Son of Man is? He's asking us, how can we do unto others as they would want to have done unto them? That's a, a juggling question. and it, It's hard. And, and I will share with you, it's one that I'm still dealing with. You know, I'm there's there's steps being taken. There's, there's ways of that we're moving forth to care for the overall community of North Coast United Methodist Church right now, and that we are trying to do things that truly cares for the overall, the care of the overall community. We're looking for things that will enable individuals, and, and I'll, just, I'll just lay it out. We're looking for things for the dear individuals that are longing to have an in-person experience here at North Coast United Methodist Church while still being the caregivers of our COVID-19 environment. And we are trying to do things here at North Coast United Methodist Church that will continue to allow us to, to provide interaction with the Holy Spirit for individuals who want to remain in their in-home sanctuaries. We are, are stuck, as, as I shared in a sermon a few weeks ago, we are stuck as leaders in, an, in a no-win situation as we're trying to be the caregivers that are truly meeting the needs of the overall community. Now, right now, uh, this past Sunday, we, we started a new adventure. We started our half-hour prayer service. And the, the blessing of this half-hour prayer service, when it, when it reaches its full potential, when it, when it becomes what it will be, it will be a social distance, mask-wearing, shortened gathering that enables individuals to have the in-person experience that they're looking for while that we also carefully 
follow the restrictions and the guidelines to be the caregivers of health. Now, here's the element within that. As we do unto others that they would want to have be done unto them, what we're not going to stop everything else that's that's going on. Because when I hear this question, who do the people say the Son of Man is, I also hear within the responses of how people need to interact with the Son of Man, the Holy Spirit, in very unique times and very unique places. And within the moment, within this time, it is my desire and it's my personal challenge that nothing stops we don't stop the video presentations we don't stop the video worship service at, at this time the only way that i can provide a full worship experience is over youtube so within this this opening question of jesus christ this this journey that i'm on right now there is a reality that exists where I am trying to hear the voices of the people, not just saying who did they think the Son of Man is, but through saying that, how they want to interact with the Son of Man. And it's a large journey, and it's one being taken very seriously that is slowly coming to reality. Now, Within this goes back to the thing. There, there's been so many times that I've heard the reaction that tell them about this tool. Tell them about the YouTube service. Tell them about the video Bible studies. Tell them about all of these video mediums that unfortunately, in six months into this, I have, we have numerous friends in North Coast United Methodist Church that still can't have that connection. So if I, I push things based on the reality that I live in, I live in a house with Wi-Fi. I live in a house that has one, two, three, four, five computers in it. I, I live in a house that I can watch YouTube on, on my television. But not everyone can do that. And the challenge is to step away from my own personal understanding and the personal environment that I live in and truly look at the needs that it exists for individuals that if I only serve in the way that I live, I leave people out. That This has been a hard journey. A hard journey. Especially when I compile it with this question. Who do, who do they say that I am? And I reflect back on my sermon on Sunday when people say who that the Son of Man is, they're also saying how that they need to interact with the Son of Man. And I can't limit their responses based on my living experience. But then it shifts, it does shift, and it comes to the challenge of how do I use my tools to make it easier for other people to find their experience. And it does start to open up with this. And then Christ turns and he says, but what about you? Who do you say that I am? And when I talk about who that Jesus Christ is to me, I'm not explaining the way that I want other people to live and to follow. It's not my job to go out and to make people worship and celebrate, celebrate Christ the way that I do. It becomes my job and my mission to use the tools that I celebrate through proclaiming who Christ is for me, and then I use those tools to reach others in the places where they are. When we look at Christ's conversation just before ascending into heaven in Matthew 28, Jesus Christ says to go ye therefore into all nations and baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. When, when Christ makes this proclamation, it talks about going to people where they are with their blessings and their limitations 
and find ways to build bridges that opens the opportunities to celebrate who Jesus Christ is and to celebrate Christ in the way that everyone can have their personal connection with Christ. So when I re reply that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, that Jesus Christ is my restorer, I use that image of restoration as a tool, not a not a cookie cutter, not not a not a blueprint to to force other people to follow. But I use it as my tools so that I can go to where people are and celebrate who Jesus Christ is for me and then hopefully create an image of who Jesus Christ can be for them. So who do I say that I, that Christ is? Who does Drew Davis say that Christ is? And then I'll share with you through that how that I use that to touch others' lives. For me, Jesus Christ is the one who opened a door to potential. It's the path that God laid out in my life that I celebrate very well. It's the, the loving relationships that I have come across over time that has opened new doors in my life. And I, I have shared ad nauseum the path that I've taken to get to here through caring music teachers that showed me potential that opened the doors for me to go to college, that opened the doors for me to go to seminary, that opened the doors to me to become a lead pastor. But within all of that, it's this journey of relationships that has showed me the next level of potential in my life so that I can take one step further in being a servant of Jesus Christ. I am not the person that I thought I would have been in high school. I'm not the person that I thought I was going to be when I stepped into college. But here I am sitting at a table doing things that I could have never fathomed that I do in my younger life because of the relationships that Jesus Christ has built in my life. So when I say, when Drew Davis says who Christ is, Christ is a relationship builder who builds bridges to new potential and new opportunities. So how, how do I show that? Well, I show it by willing, willingly desire to be in relationship with other people. I show that by at times making 57 phone calls to one person. I show that by the willingness of making phone calls. I show that through the willingness of each week during this pandemic, trying to, instead of writing a monthly email, sending out a weekly letter. I show that through the prayer and support of other people who have stepped out to be the ones who to connect in relationship. I show that through my raw, raw, go get them to our, our phone calling committee and, and letter writing community. I show that by the willingness of having Zoom meetings. I show that by taking the extra steps, by not limiting YouTube sermons, YouTube Bible studies, uh, coffee uh, Zoom time, uh, video Zoom Bible study. I, I show that by not taking away things, but adding things uh, so that there's more opportunities and more potential of having community and conversation. You know, within this whole journey, uh, we have tried things uh, within the realm of social distancing that has created opportunities of community and gather togetherness by having our drive through birthday party and communion kit collecting um, a few weeks ago. Uh, this coming s Saturday, we'll, we'll show it by, by having a concert, uh, by... All of you guys listening to a, a frustrated musician um, uh, share with you praise songs and a few folk songs uh, filtered in here and there, just so that we're kind of all in the same place. We're not getting out of our cars and hugging each other, but we're still creating community uh, through means of, of being in the same place and hearing the same thing 
and reaching out of our windows and waving to people across the way. It's that challenge of, of relationship building. So when I look at my life scenario based on Christ's challenge of who do you say that I am, I say Christ is a relationship builder. And when I use those tools to who do they say that I am, I try to build relationships, not not remold people into an image that I think that they should fit into, but I try to build relationships to hear who people are, to hear their heart's prayers, so that I can introduce them to where Christ is already active and present in those prayers. Now here's the third part of this, and this is the the blessing. Now Peter steps up and says, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Peter proclaims who that Christ is. Christ is the Messiah. And it's that realization that comes through this interaction. It's the interaction of the willingness to hear who do people say the Son of Man is. It is the willingness to explore who do I say that Christ is. And then we reach a point of this reality that Christ isn't just who the people say that Christ is. Christ isn't just who that I say Christ is. Christ is a relationship journey that combines both together and shows a complete deity that it seeds our own understandings and he could be nothing less than the fulfillment of the promise. Christ could be nothing less than the Messiah. But when we reach that realization that Christ isn't just who they say he is, Christ is not just who I say he is, but Christ is a fulfillment of a relationship-building journey that Christ could be nothing less than the fulfillment of of the promise. I want us to think about that because when we get to that point, it's where this selection of, of Scripture concludes. There is a blessing that comes from it. There is a blessing of true potential that comes from this. When Peter proclaims that Christ is the Messiah, that Christ is the fulfillment and the connecting and the blending and the bridge-building relationship between who they say Christ is and who I say Christ is. The blessing is Christ shows Peter his full potential. And Christ shows Peter the blessings of his ministry. What a beautiful ministry that we have the blessing to participate in. The reality that when we assist others to find out who Christ is for them and not forcing upon them who Christ is to me, but when we help them find Christ's relationship-building reality in their lives, we get to celebrate the truth that Christ is for all. The reality of our open table in the United Methodist Church the reality when that Christ said, for God so loved the world, he did not use the word except. Jesus Christ, a, a salvation that's for one and all. The bridge building between the Israelite and the Canaanite. The bridge, build, bridge building between those trying to find their place at the table of redemption. The true blessing when the relationship building takes place between what they say Christ is and who we say Christ is, then we find a place at the table of grace and we celebrate together that Christ is nothing less than the fulfillment of the promise. All right, let's break it down. Here's our questions for this week. The first question is, who is sharing a reality of Jesus Christ that you don't connect to? Who do they say that Christ is? That doesn't fit into your box, into your structure. Who, who, who is it? What is it? 
I, I want you to pray over that. that. That is a reality that we have to work through as we work through being the caregivers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. When we try to utter the questions, who do they say that he is, and it doesn't quite fit in to our box, that's okay. But what steps are we willing to learn about that opinion, that foresight, and how do we structure the conversations that we can build bridges and the differences? This is the most important to me, because unless we can answer this tool, then we don't, this question, then we don't have the tools that we need to, to step out and be the caregivers. I, I want you to be able to say who Jesus Christ is to you. Who do you say that Christ is? Is he the master and redeemer? Is he the savior? Is he the build bridger? Is he the prince of peace, Lord of lords? The second part of the prayer for you this week is I just want you to be able to pray over who you say that Christ is. And then I want you to pray over the third prayer is how have you seen the bridge building take place? How have you seen the blessings of the bridge building? How do you celebrate how that you've had the conversation of who they say Christ is and who you say Christ is and you've seen the bonding together of the blessings of new relationships built in the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's our Bible study for this week. Uh, almost as long as the sermon was. And as we move into this concept of a half-hour worship service, I, I, I need to become less long-winded. So a, a lot of praying to, to be held. Please and thank you. But my name is the Reverend Michael Drew Davis. Thank you for participating in this reflection of our sermon. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. God is love. Amen. We'd like to have the opportunity to get to know you. Please email us at ncumcinfo at gmail.com. And if you've been enjoying our services online, please email us. Please say hello. Again, that's ncumcinfo at gmail.com. And also, if you'd like to give to our church, please go to northcoastumc.org and click on the Give button. Again, that's northcoastumc.org, and click on the Give button. Thank you for joining us.